Hi, welcome to yet another episode of A Story for Your Query. Are you one of those teenagers who love to listen to music while doing assignments or math? Do you have to deal with your mom admonishing you for listening to music while studying? Well, then this is the podcast that you need to listen to and then get your mom to listen to it too. Let's start with our next episode, Musical Connections and the Teenager. At the outset, how many of you love to sing? Why do you sing at all? Some of the plausible reasons could be it makes you feel good, cathartic, gives you a sense of freedom, a feeling of gay abandon, connect with yourself, connect with others, and so on. But what gets in the way? The feeling, what will people think? I cannot hold a tune. I am not good enough. Etc, etc, etc. So let the music make connections with your emotional life. Let me take you through some important facts about music. First, the effect of music on emotions. Emotions and music have a close connection. Have you ever seen a mother sing a lullaby to the baby? It's probably one of the most significant bonding experiences between people that you will ever witness. Lullaby is never rock music. It is soothing. A crying baby can stop crying. Such is the power of a lullaby. Soothing music is able to beat the brain and the heart. I will sing a couple of lines of a lullaby in Kannada language. Jo 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 Krishna Malagananda Jo jo Gopiya Nanda Mukunda Jo 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 Krishna Malagananda Jo jo Gopiya Nanda Mukunda Jo jo My dad used to sing a song when I was a child. It is in Konkani, a language spoken by a small community in South India. I don't remember the whole song. But here is the refrain that I distinctly recall. Here it goes. Yogo ammu digo galo digo ye kumma Gara sonu dura gallari marita tu galamma Yogo ammu digo galo digo ye kumma I don't think I need to talk about the emotions that lie behind this song. You may not have known the language, but I'm sure you have understood the emotion that lie with it. Alzheimer's is the most common type of dementia that damages parts of the brain and affects memory, intelligence, judgment, language, and even behavior. Imagine an elderly man in a wheelchair. His head is drooping down to his chest, almost in a state of unconsciousness. His name is Henry, and sadly, he is disconnected from the world around him due to severe Alzheimer's. How can we reconnect him to the world and improve his awareness? Research has proved that by creating a playlist of music specifically for Henry, he is able to reconnect with the world around him. Music has a powerful ability to unlock memories, happy and sad, and a former prima ballerina, Martha Gonzalez, is a living proof of that. She was featured in a video filmed in 2019, and that clip has recently gone viral. Gonzalez lived with Alzheimer's disease before her death. She was the prima ballerina in Tchaikovsky's Swan Lake, in the 1960s. When the music was played, the ballerina's hands came alive and she performed the movements sitting on the wheelchair. Such is the power of music, ladies and gentlemen. Neuroplasty is the brain's ability to reorganize itself by forming new neural connections throughout life. It can be greatly affected by the harmony of music 
and the brain. In the groundbreaking study by the University of Newcastle in Australia, popular music was used to assist patients with severe brain injuries in recalling personal memories. The music affected the patient's brain's ability to reconnect to the memories they previously could not access. To give you an analogy, it's like getting directions to a location. If a road is closed and you are stuck in traffic, there are, there are certain alternative routes that are available to take you to the same place. Music can help map that alternate route in your brain. Now that we have seen some of the effects that music has on the brain, let us see how we can take a role in implementing some of these benefits into active processes. Firstly, learn to play an instrument or better still, sing. In addition to singing, having beneficial effects for our heart, it also influences our brains. Keep in mind that it is about the act of singing itself and not about how well you sing. So, bathroom singers, you stand to gain. For thousands of years, chanting is a form of music that has been used as a vehicle to form a deeper spiritual connection in the brain and affect mood. It is especially true of the sound Om, which is said to contain every sound in the universe within it. It is believed that the daily utterance of Om could make a phenomenal difference in the way one would function. You would perceive more clarity of thought. The vibrational waves caused by this chanting is believed to spread over a radius of two kilometers and spread positive vibrations. injustice if I don't mention the new education policy 2020 in this connection. Art as in both fine art and performing art are being integrated into the curriculum as per this policy. To elucidate, a song featuring the Indian struggle for independence, if introduced through the history lesson, it would be integration of music, history and poetry. A holistic learning through interdisciplinary subjects, meaningful and enjoyable too. Finally, music is the language of universal mankind. You don't need to know the language to understand it. Any questions that you have could be addressed to your query, my story at gmail.com. That's all for today. I will see you next week. <laughs>